Okay, so we're continuing working up to the classifying the natural numbers that have primitive roots um, and those that don't. And uh, we're going to continue with this following proposition. So if m and n are bigger than 2, where they are relatively prime, then there are no primitive roots modulo m times n. So let's maybe first notice the following, and that's possible primitive roots will be integers a such that the GCD of a with m and n equals 1. Um, so now notice since m and n are relatively prime, that tells us that the GCD of a with m equals the GCD of a with n, which are 1. So this is good to notice our starting point. We're starting off with uh, integers that are relatively prime to both m and n. Okay, great. And so the next thing that we want to do is the following. So let's set d equal to the GCD of um, phi of m and phi of n. So now notice that m and n are relatively prime, but phi of m and phi of n are not relatively prime. They're both even because m and n are both bigger than 2, so they at least share 2 as a common factor. Um, and so let's notice that, that this thing is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, great. Now the next thing we want to do is not only take the GCD, but we'll also take the LCM. So let's say we have L, which equals the LCM of phi of M and phi of N. But now we can write that as phi of M times phi of N over D. Okay, good. Um, just by the general result that the LCM of two numbers is their product divided by their GCD. But then we know that uh, phi of M and phi of N are both, um, <coughs> sorry, we know that M and N are relatively prime and phi is a multiplicative function on relatively, relatively prime natural numbers. So this gives us phi of M N over two, uh, sorry, over D that's equal to that, which is less than or equal to phi of m n over 2. Okay, great. So um, notice that L is less than or equal to phi of m n over 2. So also notice that if we have a primitive root, then it will have order phi of m n. So what we want to show is that its order is less than phi of mn, and in fact, we'll bound it above by this number phi of mn over 2, which, is, uh, which L is less than or equal to. So now let's check the A to the L. So that's equal to A to the phi of m times phi of n over D. But now we can write that as, fo as follows. That's a to the phi of m, all of that to the power phi of n over d, which is congruent to 1 to the phi of n over d, which is congruent to 1 modulo m. And that's by Euler's generalization of Fermat's little theorem. And then similarly, We have a to the L is congruent to 1 modulo n. Great. But now these two things together, again, um, by the fact that the GCD of m and n equals 1, this implies that a to the L is congruent to 1 modulo mn. Great, but what that tells us is that the order um, modulo mn of a is less than or equal to L for one thing, but notice that L itself is less than or equal to phi of mn over 2, so this is less than or equal to phi of mn over 2, which is strictly less than phi of mn. And recall that this phi of mn number is the number that we need to acquire in order to have a primitive root. 
So what we've shown is that there's no possibility of a primitive root modulo mn. And that's the end of this proof.